hi guys so the other day i promised you guys that i'm gonna do a top-down analysis on usd jpy so this uh this video is going to be basically me analyzing and defining my bias on uh, usd jpy and what i'll be looking forward to in terms of uh, directional bias and what trades i'll be hunting on the yen now there's a few things involved before i start uh, the breakdown of this structure here now for me to be able to analyze this pair number one i need to look at the interest rate market right we all know right now the bank of japan their interest rates they are set at minus 0 0.10 percent and the united states the federal reserve the rates are in between 0 to 0 0.25 percent meaning the federal reserve has got higher rates than the bank of japan now in terms of uh, institutional pairing in uh, dollar based strength or weakness right if the dollar is bearish you'll be looking to buy the strongest uh, versus the weakest foreign currency that means uh, a country that has got higher interest rates against a country that has got low interest rate so you'll be looking to buy the strongest versus the weakest foreign currency that is you are going to be looking at the central bank interest rates of the respective countries in your currency pay then you see if you are able to apply institutional pairing in dollar weakness or strength now if dollar is bullish right if dollar is bullish you will be looking to sell the weakest versus the strongest foreign currency that is to say that you're going to look for a country that has got low central bank interest rates against a country that has got higher central bank interest rates you're going to be selling that pair now when we look at uh, usdjpy right now this is a monthly chart right so number one i said we look at the interest rate then number two we look at the cot report now the cot report remember it's a collection of data that you have to do on a weekly basis yes i know some people are going to say but that's a lot of work but that is the work you have to put in the work so once you have data for about three to four weeks then it's going to help you not to say that it's the holy grail but it will help you in determining directional bias by comparing the positions that the non-commercials and the commercials are holding that's number two then number three whenever you're looking to trade a pair right you have to know the fundamentals behind it you have to know what is going to drive that market right so as of now when i'm doing this analysis we've got the cpi news coming in on uh, thursday and then we also have uh, uh, what do we have we've got uh, inflation data that is the cpi news we also have uh, the initial job loss numbers you see these fundamentals they all affect dollar whatever affects dollar is going to move usd jpy we also have ecb to an extent which would indirectly affect the yen because of the dollar now that's three criteria that i have mentioned and of course there's the technical part the technical analysis of the whole structure for you to be able to define so now we are going to look first at the interest rate markets uh, to see if we are able to use institutional pairing in dollar weakness or dollar strength so right now the dollar is trading inside our monthly our monthly bullish order block now when we come to the interest rates here we can clearly see the bank of japan has got interest rates set at 
minus 0.10%, right? And their next meeting is next week, sometime next week or the week after, that's June 18. Then we've got the Federal Reserve. They've got their rates set at 0 to 0 point two five percent meaning the US has got higher rates and Japan has got lower rates now in that case we need the dollar to be bearish right for us to be able to buy USD JPY we need dollar to be bearish for us to be able to buy USD JPY now is that the case at this moment in time no it's not the case because dollar is trading at a level where we are expecting dollar to gain strength so that means institutional pairing in dollar weakness or strength you put that aside now when you look at the fundamentals right when you look at the fundamentals you come to your calendar I already have the calendar open and today is Tuesday we are already done with Tuesday then come Wednesday which is tomorrow Wednesday we've got a few fundamentals we've got the crude oil inventories then we've got the Bank of Canada press conference this will not really likely impact uh, USDJPY though it will move then we also have uh, on Thursday right Thursday is the tricky day for this pay number one six thirty just after Asian close we've got the industrial production that's for the yen and then we've got the inflation numbers coming in from United the core CPI for May then we also have the OPEC report then we've got the initial job loss claim and then we've got the balance budget balance sheet from the federal reserve we also have uh, ecb monetary decision you see we've got ecb interest rate so this will indirectly affect the yen because dollar is going to react to whatever the central bank of european central bank is going to decide you see so these are the things that you have to take note of already i can see that we are going to have uh, an expansion there's going to be an expansion on usd jpy come thursday right there's going to be an expansion now on friday what do we have on friday on friday nothing much except for bsi large manufacturing i don't think it's gonna move that much on the yen we don't have much that is gonna affect the pay that we are looking at now so i mentioned interest rates we put that aside because it's not uh, aligning with the institutional pairing then number two we've got uh, the fundamentals number three we've got the commitment of traders report you see you're gonna have to use that then number four which which i'm going to say is one of the most important uh, aspects or criteria that you have to use when you're trading the yen that is the u.s government bonds the 10-year yield now the 10-year yield is the is a government bond from the United States this basically is a long-term interest rate for the United States in 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 most cases it helps in determining the long-term bias that the dollar is going to take now when you look at the USD US 10-year yields here you can clearly see we are now back at the 1.528 price handle which is a handle which I expect price to find resistance uh, support sorry and move to the upside right but if we do break and close below then we could see the yields moving lower and when the yields move lower that means a weaker dollar right so the price point which we have right now on the 
US 10 year yields, we should be expecting price to find support, right? And when that happens, expect a rally in dollar index, right? Expect a rally in dollar. So we are back at 1.530, an area of discount on the US 10 year yield. So expect price to move to the upside on the yields. So you see, I already have my charts uh, marked out. These are not charts that you just wake up to and you don't have any analysis to it. You can clearly see I've got my last down candle here, which is my bullish order block. Price moves, moves away, impulsive move. We have price come back, test it, move away, come back and test again there order block moves away and now we are back on that same structure so i'm expecting price to find support on lower time frames you can go to an hourly chart you can see how price is already fighting the bulls and the bears there so now what does this tell us we might see a further move to the upside on dollar now if that happens where do we anticipate usdjpy to trade to if DXY is gaining strength, the yen is going to lose momentum, right? Yen is going to be weak. That means a bullish USD JPY. Now, if you look uh, since the beginning of the year, right? Since the beginning of the year, which is here. The yen, I'm sure it's one of the majors that has lost big time against the greenback. You can see since 1 January, the yen here, it has lost almost 7.73% against the greenback, right? So the yen is weak, yet dollar is uh, it's not rallying that much. So the yen has lost big time against the greenback. And that's why we saw that big rallies from January, February and March. Now, once you have all those informations, this is when you come to your chart. And when you come to the chart, you need to define your period of study where you're going to break down the structure. Now I'm going to look at the nine to 18 month period, which is this range here of data, all this range. And you can see how price closed above there. But now we cannot also ignore this guy so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna mark my turning points in market structure now that is number one we've got uh, an area of interest right here this is where the market turned and going to the upside this is where the market turned and went to the upside and then we have this high which was broken right here and that's where price is currently trading just go to 89 right that's where price is at right now now let me let me make sure i've got uniform so that's 2022 february i just want all the lines to be aligned february 2022 now with this marked with this price action marked i'm gonna continue marking out the other levels we've got this high here right and then we have got these two equal highs let me extend this line submit 22 february right and then this one here i'm gonna align it This is just so that your chart looks clean and it's not like all scattered. And then we also have these highs here. See these two equal highs here. This this will probably the, be your long term target in terms of uh, where you are hunting price to go to. This will be your long term targets. Now, once you have done this, right, we also have this one here where price broke to the downside and then eventually broke also to the upside 
so i'm talking about let me just highlight those points for you guys so i'm talking about this law it was broken here and price formed created a new lower low but when it traded back it didn't find any resistance there it just went through took out the buy stops that were above this high traded above now we're back in that range we've got these two equal highs they are of interest to where current price action is and then we've got these two equal highs this will be your long term target to the upside now once you've done that right once you've done that you switch back to your candlestick chart right already i have my structure mapped out 9 to 18 month period yes it includes these two bearish order blocks you can see this is our last up close candle now i'm gonna mark it out extend my line right can you see the two equal highs they're coming right where the last up candle was because this last down close candle this was december that becomes our bullish order block this is our bearish order block and this is our last up close candle and then we also have this last up close candle now we've got this one here if you look at this candle here guys this one the reversal pattern here this candle is uh, let's see its closing price is one 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 four or seven then if you look at this one it's one one four eight seven and this one is uh, let's see open high low close i want to see the closing price of this uh, candle here just move this a bit yeah triple one four seven that's the close and then this one here also the close is triple one four seven two triple one four seven this one has got a higher close in this candle which makes it our last up close candle right which is our bearish order block right now you can see that's where price is heading to above this equal highs here we've got buy stops now this structure you can see price took out this short term high took it out and then traded above we also have this last down candle which is our bullish order block now when price rallied to the upside you see this displacement that happened here this move to the upside yes the video is going to be a bit long guys because i'm going to be detailing what i look out for yes this process for me doesn't take like five minutes to do but because i'm trying to explain so that you guys can understand then it might be a bit long now we've got this displacement here which happened january february march april may june january february march january february and march this displacement in terms of price you can see it left clear price action for us to use we've got a fair value gap we have a fair value gap here right you can see i'm still on the monthly chart fair value gap this is gonna make things when i get gonna make things easier when i drop down to lower time frames so we've got a fair value gap there and we've got another one here but these are intermediate closest discount array that we are going to be looking for when price trades back now to the upside we have this range here we've got the law of our bullish bearish order block the law of our bearish order block I'm talking about this up candle here and then we had this okay let me delete that you see we had this high here and inside that was a fair value gap in discount you see this range here in price let me mark that 
this range there was a fair value gap in premium range we have we had a liquidity void here we've got a liquidity void here right and we have a fair value gap we've got a fair value gap now once you have marked this price action now we also have another fair value gap here which price did respect and fell to the downside so we are right trading again inside this fair value gap this high and this low inside there is a fair value gap now once you've marked these uh, levels right we're now going to look at the cot report to see now how we can frame the bias of this chart now i'm gonna go to my cot report and i'm on the japanese yen futures positions now when we look from the period of uh, 30th of march up until 1st of june right mainly on the commercials i use i normally use the commercials you can see here last week they increased their long positions the previous week they took slightly profit the previous week they increased the previous week they increased took profit took profit took profit took increased again then on the short side they increased their short positions they increased their short positions for the past two weeks and also for the past two weeks on the long positions firstly they took profit and then last week they increased their long positions now when you look at the percentage hold that they've got they've actually reduced their long exposure and they've increased their short exposure open interest jumped massively 8800 points now open interest signifies to us that there's gonna be a huge expansion on the yen in the coming days or weeks now the non-commercials of course we're not gonna disregard these guys we should not disregard what they're doing they also increased their loans and they've also increased their short positions by about 2000 positions and loans they increased by about 5000 positions so you can see both sides are leaning towards a higher usd jpy now when we come to the chart do we have the signs that the yen could be trading higher yes we do have those signs look at the previous month's low this is our current low this is our previous month low previous month low previous month low previous month low we had a new low formed so you can see this is a clearly defined up trend right we've got a clearly defined uptrend here where market is respecting the lows and violating the highs is high this one hasn't been violated so we had a new lower low we had a new, but this month has already violated this price to the upside that shows you momentum that shows you the willingness of the market to move higher right just maybe straight there now once we have seen that we've already seen that on the monthly chart the yen is currently in a very uptrend which is strong right and that uptrend started way back in january and when the yen is trading higher guys it means the yen is losing value against the dollar but when the yen moves lower it means the yen is gaining value now we're gonna go to our weekly time frame now on the weekly chart this is now where we need to define uh, the discount arrays that we are going to be hunting for our long positions already i can see this is our last down close candle before that rally All right that's our last down candle and that's the 50 percent mean threshold we also have this last down candle All right and this is our 50 percent mean 
threshold now can you see how price is respecting the 50 percent mean threshold you see here this would have been a clearly defined bullish order block the following week you're hunting for longs boom market moves came again boom market moves came into your bullish order block boom market moves you see the current week this is our current weekly candle can you see why it has traded to inside our bullish order block which is a discount array you are looking for price to trade into discount for you to trade long right so already this is the close of uh, the second day of the week and yen has already moved 35 pips away from the discount array which is in this case the bullish order block now we've got this move from this high to this downside and we had this rally from january now this is basically a correction in the market the market is breathing so now that we have identified that we've got this bullish order block here if you want to label it you can So we've got these two bullish order block. Remember, on the monthly chart, we have a bias where USDJPY is respecting the lows, violating the highs. That's a clearly defined uptrend. And the data that we looked at, the COT report, is showing us that they are increasing their longs on both sides, the non-commercials and the commercials. And then when we look at the USD 10-year yields you see it's trading into discount so dollar is likely to find support which is gonna help uh, support the rally in usd jpy so i'm gonna go on to the daily now on the daily you can see how price traded into our discount array this weekly bullish uh, order block and it's starting to rally now, where do you think it's going to? It's going to take out these two equal highs and ultimately above these two equal highs. That's 88 pips. So potentially there's 88 pips on offer on USDJPY and almost 146 as a long-term target. Now, when you look at the fundamentals, Thursday is the key day. Expect an expansion on Thursday on USDJPY. Whether it's to the upside, which is what the bias is telling us right now for me i'll be hunting for longs on the yen but remember anything is possible in the market and i'm not a financial advisor you take this information at your own peril so you can see guys most of the hard work has been done on the monthly chart and as we go to lower time frames you can see how it becomes easy for you to follow up on your levels that you have marked now remember this is our 50 percent mean threshold of this weekly bullish order block see this price point what do you have there you see that down candle there right let me zoom in let me zoom in quickly So that you guys can see clearly you see this down candle it's coming right at our 50 percent mean threshold of the weekly bullish order block now that is your ideal area whenever price trades below if price trades into the bullish order block right yes it's an ideal area to go long but an entry closer to the proximal line is going to increase the risk on your trade it means you're going to have a bigger stop loss but an entry at the 50 percent mean threshold right is going to reduce your risk on the trade because your stop loss is going to be short now let me go back to the daily quickly 
me go back to the daily zoom out you see we've got this low and then we have this high right and then market traded created a new low and then market created another high come and created another higher low you see it's respecting now we've got this high right this high only came after market created this low right if we grab our fips from this low to this high right now here i'm looking at retracement level can you see where the ote is coming in at it's coming in right inside our 50 exactly our 50 percent mean threshold of the bullish order block on the weekly chart you see here 109.079 that would be your ideal entry for long trades to the upside with your stops below 108.553 so let me go to a lower time frame you can see here the optimum trade entry right inside this down candle you see right here by this down candle which now is our lower time frame bullish order block you see that's our lower time frame bullish order block where we anticipate market to find support here and then rally so with the fundamentals that we've got guys it won't be a surprise to see yen trading here and then rally or it's gonna come around 109.234 and then find support and trade to the upside so already when i open a chart i'll be knowing already what i need to do i'm not gonna go on a chart without not knowing what i want to trade right i won't go blind i have to understand exactly what i need to see so when i see price approaching this level that's when i'll be anticipating to go long so for now i'm not looking to short usd jpy at all i'm looking for long entries only so yeah this is what i wanted to share with you guys yes there's more to it there's more to this analysis which i cannot review here only in the mentorship group but for my youtube subscribers this information i'm sure you can use it and uh, improve on your trading skills and you can use it to do your own analysis so yeah i'm gonna try to do this uh, probably weekly with a different pair or with a follow-up to what i have done so that everyone keeps getting motivated to get into this industry here and uh, see what they can do and if you haven't subscribed guys to the channel just make sure you click the subscription button there and make sure the bell icon is highlighted so that you get notification you get notified whenever i upload a new video or new content to the channel so yeah with that guys i wish you good luck and happy trading thank you